On our recent trip to Orkney, we were lucky enough to spend a day with Chris and Julie Ramsey, who were about to embark on what can only be described as an epic and bonkers journey. We'll let Chris tell the story. So sitting next to me, I have a gentleman called Chris Ramsey, who is completely and utterly bonkers, and he is embarking on something which is completely and utterly bonkers. I'm gonna let him tell you all about that. But first of all, I want him to tell you what he used to do for a living, because it's very, very interesting. And I know for Chris, it's probably not an amazing time because he now doesn't do that. But I think for the EV world and actually for the world and the air we breathe, I think it's probably probably a good thing. Yeah. So I'll let Chris fire away and tell you what he does. Did, yeah, did, did, or did. did. Yeah, so I mean, I used to work in the oil and gas industry um, and I used to run a, uh, be a shop floor manager on a, shop, a manufacturing plant, building tools for the oil and gas industry. And people have always got that perception. If you work in the oil and gas industry, you, you can't like electric cars. Yes. And it's strange because being in the oil and gas industry is how I find out about electric cars and how I got passionate about electric cars. So we all we all know it's well populate, uh, documented what's going on with the oil and gas industry at the moment. So there's a big downturn and I was made redundant from the oil and gas industry which has actually been probably one of the best things for me in, in a way because now being made redundant I can now devote my 100% time to this, my passion, which is going out and supporting electric vehicles and, and going and having adventures and kind of showing people what electric vehicles are all about. So from the negative, in a sense of being paid redundant, um, it's actually a big positive. It's actually rejuvenated my life and made me kind of go, great, I can go and do what I love. Um, the, in the industry has been good to me. Um, but from that perspective, I now do what I love and what I'm passionate about. And I truly believe electric cars are the future. I mean, I've tried to infiltrate a lot of my colleagues at work. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of them do actually used to talk to me more about electric cars than about work. So, well, um, <laughs> which, is, which is actually quite a good thing. So you're spreading the word. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. That is and excellent. If, if you look at the market now, if you look at the oil and gas businesses, Norway is the EV capital. Yes. It's classed as EV capital. Um, they have stat oil. Yes. which is a state-owned oil uh, company. And they're divesting all of their profits yes. into renewables. Yes, they're building yeah. the world's largest offshore foot and wind yep. farm off the coast of Aberdeen, the oil and gas capital. Yep. Yep. Um, Shell, BP, they're all investing in EV chargers and EV infrastructure. Uh, the oil and gas industry has kind of went, yeah, we need to change. Yeah, and they are. You know, they're all divesting, they keep it quiet, but they're all divesting yeah. all their funds into the EV infrastructure and, and renewables infrastructure. Which is just incredible. I think the future is definitely future electric, is. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's it's not petrol. No. I've got a little picture that I'm going to pop in here, which when I read it and looked at it, I thought was amazing. Do you know the one, the one with the um, the girl looking out the window? Yes. Yes. And I looked at that and I was like, that that sort of hit home at me a little bit. Uh, quite well, that hit home quite a lot. And it, ultimately, the reason we do this is probably not for us, but it's going to be for our children, yeah. isn't it? saying we're going on an amazing an absolutely amazing journey people think it's mad but really it is going to be an amazing journey uh, it's an adventure called the Mongol rally yep and it's 330 teams are entering this year and the okay. plan is people take the biggest little rusty banger they can and drive from Chichester Goodwood racing circuit all the way across Europe through Kazakhstan and Mongolia and into southern Siberia Ulan Udi and the plan is, it's an adventure. Things are supposed to go wrong, things are supposed to break down. Um, but from our perspective, we're taking yeah, the first ever electric car on the Mongol Rally. And the guys who organized the Mongol Rally thought, well, you've got your own challenges, charging infrastructure. Um, and they just thought it'd be a great idea to inspire other people, and myself as well, inspire other people to maybe go electric next time. Wow. That's, that is impressive. So 330 teams, yeah. and they, I'm guessing it's been similar numbers or high numbers in the years gone by as yeah, well. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I think this is their biggest year, but it, um, there was about, still about 310 teams last year. So oh, Wow. So you're the first team ever to enter yep. an electric car, because really, looking from the outside, it's not doable, is it? It's not doable. It's not. It doesn't seem very feasible, does it? It's, it's, <laughs> it is. It's definitely... It's, it's, I would say it's probably just another one of those misconceptions. We, you know, everybody has a misconception about electric cars, you can't go long distances in them, you shouldn't be driving out of towns in them. But, I mean, this adventure, if you look at 
because it is an adventure. We're probably driving about 150, 200 miles a day. Now we're gonna get about, I'm conservatively going about 90 to 100 miles per charge on the Leaf. Wow, so. So we're gonna stop off maybe somewhere for lunch, get up in the morning with a full battery, stop yeah. off for lunch, and you know, then travel on for the rest of the day. And that's, we're not doing anything different to what the other Mongol rallies will do. So it, it, so it plays really well into the Leaf. Is there any parts of the route that are particularly worrying you or any parts that aren't worrying you at all? So obviously probably charging in England will be very easy, yeah. I, I assume. And what about into Europe and, and, well, and the like? When we when we leave um, Chichester, we'll head off into yeah into Europe. We'll take the Eurotunnel and go into Europe. Now there is a lot of rapid charging and fast charging infrastructure in Europe. There's still going to be no mean feat. We've got about 1,700 miles to cover, and we've got to rely on every charge point working. Well, um, but from that perspective, when we get into the Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Russia, um, we're there to change perceptions. And every, even back here in the UK, everybody's perceptions of what a charge point is. Because when you go into these countries, you still have access to buildings, 240 volt power supplies. Yep. There are plenty of electric vehicle charge cables out there that you can plug into caravan sockets, two pin, three pin sockets. So the changing the notion of what a charge point is, if you are near a building, if you're near somewhere that has access to power, you have a charge point. Yes. And you do find, I don't know if you found the same, but people are so accommodating. When you pull up with an electric car, yeah. people love it and they want to see the car, they want to get around it, and they want to just get involved, and then you find that people are quite happy to give you access to a plug. I, so, can, I can't relate to that. We, we have had a situation in Scotland uh, and we needed a charge, and a guy who happens to have an electric car, help yourself, plug yeah. it, no problem. With it. Can we pay you for the electric? No. Yeah, it, it so doesn't even want anything for it. The cool thing we're going to have is when we get out there, is we're probably introducing electric cars to people for the very first time. Yeah. So we're going to get the car doors open, we're going to hang out with the locals, we're going to let them walk around the car, maybe even let them go for a drive, who knows? So really introduce them to it. And then from that perspective, they're going to be more than willing to give us access to, um, to yeah. power. And the other cool thing we'll do is we're stopping off at a couple of like you know, uh, programs, businesses, maybe schools, and just. Um, through in Kazakhstan, we're actually stopping off the Future Energies Expo to okay. talk to the local government and businesses there about electric vehicles. They're all switching on to electric now in Kazakhstan um, and the whole renewable energy market. So it'd be great to kind of get out there and engage with people and maybe inspire those countries to push forward with electric as well. So, so effectively, long stretches of your journey could be emissions free uh, yeah. if, if you're using the, the right energy and, and if, if you've got somewhere like Kazakhstan which sounds so far away it sounds it sounds like they've got haven't got roads that's that's what I think <laughs> when I think of Kazakhstan I think they've got no electric they they have camels and, and carts that's that, that or don donkeys and carts and that's what I have in my head I'm probably very wrong but that's what I imagine and then for you to charge an electric car in my head I think no that's not it's not gonna work but you, yeah. you, you must have done a lot of research into this to, to Kazakhstan is fast I think it's yeah. something like about three to four thousand miles so we're gonna be the first car to go from the fort from west right across the east side of Kazakhstan okay. and as you say some of the roads I mean some of the terrain will come across is pretty harsh and some of the roads do just stop and you drive through a lake or through a river <laughs> And come out the other side, and that, the road continues. That's what I mean by no roads. Yeah, <laughs> and but that but that's the that, what they class as the main highway. So, and you go you go through into that. But again, we're going to be travelling at speeds at about fifty mile an hour because of the road conditions, and that's ideal electric vehicle speed. You know, the range efficiency is going to be great. That's the, the thing is, when you drive here, you seldom average more than 50 60 miles an hour anyway yeah. so so actually that's that's probably not too bad for a place that's got no roads yeah so, so it, makes, it makes perfect for me it's it actually makes perfect sense and i think i don't understand why nobody's done it before maybe i think differently to everybody else i but, think you do <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of think the distances you're traveling the conditions you're going in yes you can get access to electricity everywhere yes um and so it just makes ideal sense yes, so i'm hoping absolutely. that more and more people will look at this and go Actually, I'm going to give that a go next year. Fingers crossed. It's, that's ultimately what you're trying yeah. to do. Is it, it's inspiring more people to kind of. I mean, this is a combustion engine rally. Yes. And that's predominantly where it's come from. So it's kind of to get people's perception. It's an adventure after all. So why not have that other adventure and yep. experience the cultures more? Because you're going to get out of the car all the time in all these different countries, and, yep. and you're going to have to be interacting with these cultures. So it, it forces people to have an even better adventure for me. What, what, what's the the rally about though I mean it, what why is it there it, it's yeah so the adventurist itself the guys who organize this rally 
the, the fundamental part of this really is they're raising money for a sustainable charity called Cool Earth. Okay. So they're they're all about raising money for the um, indigenous people in the Amazon. Yeah. And trying to protect the rainforest there and protect their um, protect their lives. Um, because obviously the rainforest is just being chopped down, diminishing yes. year after year. So they they've raised about six and a half million pounds so far. That's brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. And to do it in an EV as well. To it do it in an EV, makes sense, yeah, it, it just yeah. it just fits in with their ethos. So that's yeah. why they've been really supportive of it. And and personally, um, we're doing this for WWF Scotland. Okay. And worldwide World Wildlife Federation, obviously, you know, they're massive. They they do a lot of things around the world, but in Scotland in particular. They do a lot of initiatives to support uh, reducing emissions in, in in our country, so it's obviously quite close to my heart. Um, so it's 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 quite good to be able to do that. And Scotland do a really good job of that, to be fair, don't they? We do. Uh, we're, um, <laughs> we're in Orkney today, and we're seeing that very much. So yeah, yeah. At the uh, Orkney, I, I was, was wrong actually. I, I assumed it was 110 percent, but actually I was told yesterday it's 120 percent now yeah. of their electricity is generated from. Well, they generate 120 percent of their electricity, so everything they use is is sustainable. And yeah. I'm guessing 20 percent goes into their EVs or, or back to the mainland. Yeah, or, it so. does. I mean, they, they I think they 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 can't actually they don't have a big enough pipe yes to cope with how much demand the Orkney can put back yes which is just incredible and um, I mean I'm just excited to be here because um, one of the people I've worked with is Jonathan Waterfield from EcoCars I think you know Jonathan as well yep and um, yeah the natural progression for me is I did an, an adventure with Jonathan John Gross to Land's End um, and we loved it so much we did it in a 24 kilowatt leaf we drove all the way from John Gross to Land's End got there Loved it so much. Charged the, the leaf, jumped back in, and just drove all the way back. See, that sort of thing tells me he is insane. <laughs> He's insane to do something like that. Yeah. We, me and uh, Kate, have had some long trips in, in electric cars, but nothing compared to what this guy's done and is doing. But the, it's worse than that. So there is going to be hardships, obviously driving yeah. driving out in the middle of nowhere, looking for charging points, but. He's doing it with his wife, so it's going to be him and his wife, ten thousand miles in a Nissan Leaf. And I can tell you that charging may not be the biggest problem for him. So, how do you think you're going to cope with that? I think, to be honest with you, I think it's going to go really well. I think yeah. I'm very fortunate because my wife, we've we've been together for you know a, a large number of years, and we've travelled around the world together. Um, we've driven um, quite a lot of things, driving a lot in electric cars. She loves electric cars. She loves adventure. She drives a Leaf, doesn't she? She does, she yeah. Drives a leaf, so. She drives a Leaf. We've got a uh, 24 kilowatt. Sounds like an amazing girl. She yeah, she is. Girl. And um, I think it's we'll have a, we'll have a bit of fun along the way. We'll have a few conversations that might not go well, but I think it's just she's a perfect person for me to go and do this with. Uh, brilliant. That's perfect that, companion. That is really good. That is really good. Uh, and is there any way that we can follow you or uh, do you? Because uh, uh, how are you financing this? <laughs> well, it's it's all self-funded. Okay. It's all self-funded. It's literally everything out of your pocket. Yeah. That is, that's incredible. So, so we, we have, I mean, to follow us, we have got um, our Plug and Adventures Facebook page and at Plug and Adventures on Twitter. Um, so if you want to follow the rally as we go through you the month, yeah, Plug Adventures. and Adventures, yeah. we have got, um, we're going to post um, over the next couple of months how you can follow us, how you can track the adventure live, you know, where we are, um, and follow us and dot blogs and things. So that will come out on our Facebook page. Um, but also we have set up a crowdfunding page which is crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash plug in adventures. Um, if anybody would like to, to donate to our crowdfunder, pick up maybe a jacket or a plug in adventures t shirt. Well, I'm, I'm certainly going to be buying one of those because actually I think they look quite good. And if it yeah. can assist, then we'll definitely be buying one. I was just going to say on that as well, I mean, if people want to go there and just even just read the crowdfunder page because that will just tell you more about why we're doing it, the belief behind it, and, and all that kind of stuff, and the, the charities that we're supporting. So um, even just take a look at that to find out a bit more. That's, it, is, it all sounds like a very mad idea but I think at the end of it I think you could genuinely give because I think a, a, a common misconception that people have like you said is that you can't go anywhere in an EV and, yeah. and clearly you can so if you can drive across as many miles and kilometres of, of countries that have very little infrastructure and roads mm. in a car which is probably one of the less capable cars now yeah. in comparison to a lot. So we're talking of, of a 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf with a range of, on a good day, 115? Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. And on a bad day, would you say 
85, 90 yeah. maybe. So depending on the road, yeah, the hills, road yeah. conditions, yeah. But but if this guy can do it in that distance, and I've, I've for not for one minute doubt that he can, I think it's fair to say that you can probably manage to drive to the shops or just do your daily commutes, which people don't think you can. They, they just don't think it's possible. That's, so it's still incredible because I've been doing this since 2011. Wow. So I've and that's that's when I got hooked. Um, and the perceptions then we're still talking about today and the myths we're still trying to bust today. So you can't drive very long, very far distances, you can't, you haven't got a charge point. Uh, yeah. Where do you plug it in? There's not many of them. And hopefully with this adventure, it'll just challenge everybody's notions, it'll get people talking, it'll get a serious debate going and just prove to people you can, you can do it. You can drive long distance in electric vehicles. You're not gonna go to the extent that I do. But at the end of the day, we are just basically wanting to challenge those notions and bust those myths along the way in a way that people can relate to. Yes. And I think that's my ethos is really, I want really people to do it in a way that people can relate and think, hang on a minute, yeah, I, yeah. I know that, I see that, I do that. There, there, there is a lot of interest around it as well. Did you uh, did you say that Top Gear turned up at one of your interviews? <laughs> yeah. Some top Gear turned that up, was, I mean. <laughs> and that's the incredible thing, because the industry is changing. Yeah. And I mean, people like us, and I think we are, on the crest, but we're, we're the pioneers. We're helping pioneer the way the motor industry is going to be. Yes. And Top Gear are there, and they're kind of going, we love this car, we love what it's about. We really want to keep in touch with you. We really want to follow this story. I've got the wrong way, Chris, sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I'm so wrapped up what we're talking about. <laughs> and But I just find they, you know, the industry is changing gradually, gradually. Yes. They'll come round. And, um, with people like Top Gear, at the end of the day, they are influential. Yes, they are. It's, it's very and true. It's very we true. do need people like that to kind of start spreading the message as much as what we do. Something about Top Gear, actually, which I think is, is quite credible, is since Clarkson disappeared, they yeah. seem to be a little bit more pro EV, they don't do. they? They, they do. even tested the Model X, do you remember? Yes. And it was a fantastic review of a fantastic car. And they, they did it. Uh, they did, did it a justice, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it definitely. Rory def Reed. Yeah, 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 he did a really good guy. review on it. And um, I think I think he can actually drive, can't he? He does yes, all his own driving does. shots, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. He doesn't get anybody else doing them, which is uh, <laughs> which is quite nice. So, Chris, uh, talking about the Leaf itself, um, I mean, that, we're talking about a, yeah. a big outlay there, and, and um, the the modifications to it. I mean, well, what what actually has been done that's going to make it more convenient for you to drive this? Because I can't imagine driving a normal Nissan Leaf anywhere apart from a normal tarmac road yeah. so maybe maybe along a, a tiny dirt track but nothing nothing too strenuous, nothing so, too strenuous. So what is really different about the leaf that you've got that, that's gonna that's gonna aid your your journey or, or make it more safe i suppose yeah. or doable i think the cool thing is we've got a 30 kilowatt nissan leaf center it's just standard in the sense that we've taken no we've not changed anything to drivetrain Okay. The battery is standard, despite the couple of the internet theories that are going around just now. What, um, what are them theories? Well, it, we have a roof rack on the top of the car, and people think that there's maybe another battery hidden in the roof rack. Um, we're going to maybe <laughs> take a diesel generator in the back of the car. Oh. We're going to tow something, or we've got a, a Nissan Pathfinder on the Navarro following us down the route. So we are completely unsupported. That's that's that makes so, it even more yeah. brave in the fact but, that you've got no support I, w I will say i mean yeah we answer the support everybody on the mongo rally is unsupported that is the whole point okay. you're supposed to have an adventure so and you're supposed to take a standard car so really all we've done is we've taken off the shelf nissan leaf uh say 30 kilowatt center we've stripped out the back seats yes we've reduced the weight so taking the back seats out actually reduced weight by about 34 kg we've put six millimeter mil aluminium plate underneath to protect the underside for some of those rocks that are gonna fly up. Yes. You're gonna find plenty of those. We've put some spaces on the suspension. Yes. And we've put some rugged tires on it. Okay. And the roof rack with the lovely LED light bulb, oh, the which light I bulb. think is pretty cool. I, I love that. Yeah. That's my key feature, but that's it. We've got some footage actually, which I'm just gonna, I'm gonna insert here, uh, which this is nothing to do with me. This is purely, uh, it came from Chris from Nissan uh, and they did all the film work. So you'll see the standard of it is very high.
We'll have to drop it by you sometime. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do, could we review it? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, that's the thing. I've, I will say thank you. I mean, a lot of people see the video yeah. and they'll think, yeah, oh, Nissan is not It's not. I mean, right. one of the things, I, I did approach Nissan if, uh, a few, uh, quite a few months back about this project and I'm doing this. Yeah. And they just thought, great thing. Yeah. Obviously, it's great publicity for them. But the reality is they thought, look, let's help you get the message out. Yes. Um, and create a video. And I could never have hoped to get that kind of platform. Just yeah. now. I mean, the world, I hope to get UK and Scotland talking about electric vehicles. And, you know, how could this be possible? Is it possible? Will they do it? Will they not? Um, but now the world is talking, which yes. is just incredible. And I think that's more incredible for the EV industry yes. than me. It's not about me in that sense. Um, so yeah, it's it's just it's great that they've done that, um, and great that I can go off and have an adventure and kind of have that platform to kind of show the world what's capable. The, the, what's mo the more you talk about it, the more I wish I was, I was involved. <laughs> and I, I suppose the only way I can get involved is by supporting you in some way, which yeah. we will do. But I feel like I wish I was doing it. <laughs> don't, don't you, Kate? I do. Yeah. To, I do. It's it sounds completely bonkers, and I do like a bit of bonkers. I yeah. Do, I do like anything that's a bit non-standard, if you like. So, I think I've got to be a little bit bonkers, I suppose, to have a brain that I have to, to take this on. But while yeah. while we're here in Orkney, I was just going to say, I mean, just to everybody as well, because um, obviously people will be watching this have maybe supported to send support to our crowdfunder just now. So I just want to say thank you to everybody um, that supported our crowdfunder thus far, and especially the people in Orkney that I'm going to meet tonight, because um, some of the crowdfunder donors are there tonight. So yeah. um, I just want to say thank you to you guys, and I'll see you personally and say thank you. And if I meet any of the crowdfunder supporters um, along the way, come up, say hello, and I will personally thank you because it's incredible the support we've had from the whole EV industry. Yeah, it's just been amazing. Please follow these guys because th what they're doing is completely bonkers and, and well worth. I think ten pound of anyone's money, but at least ten minutes of your time just to sit and watch it, and you will be able to follow them on their journey, yeah. uh, stage by stage, or to see what they've done and what what they've covered. Remember that it's the finishing times are staggered, aren't they? Is it a two, yeah. two week window? So it's it's uh, it starts like the sixteenth of July. Yeah. We the uh, the finishing line in New Land opens up on the sixteenth uh, of August. Yeah. And then closes on the sixteenth of September. So it's a four week staggered. So teams can arrive at any point during that period because um, some people will rush on and some people will just take the time and have the adventure. So it is that staggered period and we hope we will basically appear somewhere within six to eight weeks. Depending on what we find along the way. It's it's completely extraordinary. The first electric car ever, and he's gonna be the first, sorry, they are gonna be the first electric car ever to complete it. And I think that is extraordinary and well worth, like I say, at some donation, some kind of following, some help, some just a comment saying, "Come on, come on, you're doing really well. Crack on, you can, you can do it." All that because there's going to be times when, quite frankly, these guys are going to be chin strapped and <laughs> sleeping in a desert next to a Nissan Leaf under a poncho. I, I think I would certainly be feeling it, especially after X amount of what two yeah, months. Pretty much, yeah. Definitely. Now, I, mean, I, I look at it a different way because I just think I'm privileged to be be able to follow my passion. So this is what I this is what I'm going to be doing full time now in, in that sense. Yes. So um, I just think it's a privilege for me to be able to pursue my passion and and hopefully give back to people and, and inspire other people. I just think it's incredible, extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. So give a little bit of time to uh, to Julie and Chris and follow them and follow their adventure. And thank you very much. Really yeah, no appreciate problem. that. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you for driving your car. Uh, that's I'm all right.